we could we could all agree that we got to do something different or well we could all agree that we do have some issues facing public education in america i would say that that should be darn near unanimous right we know we have issues we can't continue to spend the way we've been spending it's just on an unsustainable path number one and number two we're really not seeing the successes we would like whether it's that other countries are, are outpacing us and we've still been on pace or we're actually slipping, depending on what surveys, what studies you look at, it's, uh, it's really not a good path. We're spending too much and we're not getting the success we would like. We had levies last week. Most of them failed. A lot of them are going to be on the ballot again this November. So what do we do? See, I think when it comes to Little Miami School District and some of the other ones as well, this is our opportunity. Often out of, out of trial and tribulation, we get opportunities to grow. Mother, necessity is the mother of invention. We need to come up with some new ideas. We need some new solutions. So how about we sit down and throw out a bunch of really good ideas and probably a bunch of really bad ideas, take the best ones, and start crafting public education in America for the future. Maybe we could lead the nation coming up with some really good ideas. Now, there are some states that have made some headway and done some really cool stuff. We can take their successes, leave their failures, and start running with it. That's what we need to come up with. That's what Little Miami School District, if if they had good leadership, they would be doing that. They would be petitioning the state and the federal government for changes that are not legal or are not recognized at this point, saying we need to come up with new stuff and certainly running with the things that we can change. So what are those ideas? Well, I'm going to talk about that right now with State Rep. Bill Coley. How are you, Bill? Great, Doc. How are you this morning? Doing fine. So happy to have you on. I uh, met you a couple of months back. We were at a uh, local event talking about school choice and some of the issues. And some of the ideas, some of the things that I'll bet a lot of people don't know are going on at the state level, some opportunities, really, really fascinating stuff, like the, the online exchange program the state has set up. Can you explain what that is? Sure, Doc. It, it, as you know, uh, you heard us talk about it. You know, if a kid goes to school on Monday morning here and does his lessons, and uh, the t- what's been going on forever since Little House on the Prairie, the teacher assigns school, she'll assign homework. The kid will hopefully do it tonight, turn it in tomorrow. She'll grade it tomorrow night. She'll find out 24 of 26 kids got number four wrong. She'll go over that material again on Wednesday. That's the way it's always been. Well, what if they go home tonight, they log on, and they do their homework online? Then she'd know about the problem on number four tomorrow and go over tomorrow. That'd be better for kids, right? Yeah, it's certainly more efficient. Okay. Well, what if when they get to the problem on number four tonight and they get it wrong, it automatically replayed that part of the lesson and asked an alternate question? Now, instead of 24 or 26 kids getting that wrong, three, four, five get it wrong. Teacher knows who they are tomorrow morning. She gives a little individualized instruction to those three, four, five kids, and the rest of the class keeps moving on. That would be better for kids, right? Yeah. Well, since you have all that stuff recorded anyhow, if a kid at Fort Fry High School in Beverly, Ohio, wanted to take advanced placement government from Tish Menchhofer at Lakota East, we move a little money from Fort Fry to Lakota East, and we move the credit and stuff from Lakota East to Fort Fry. Now a kid at Fort Fry can get credit that he, a class that he could never take before because they don't have advanced placement government at Fort Fry. And, and Lakota gets a little revenue that they didn't have. That's better for everybody. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's better for the students. And that's, I mean, first off, and that's our primary focus or should be and also probably good for the school districts. Well, and since we're not communist, Doc, we don't expect Tish to do that for free. So we give her a supplemental contract, like being the cheerleader advisor, and we say, hey, look, we're going to give you 60% of your online revenue. Well, if, if she, in addition to doing all of her classes in the bricks and mortar, she does 150 kids a year at $600 a student, that's $90,000. She's getting a $54,000 bonus at the end of the year. But if she was costing Lakota fifty grand before, 
when they they take the 40% to reduce, she's costing Lakota $14,000 a year. So that's a good thing for Lakota. It's a good thing for Ms. Menchoffer. It's a great thing for the students involved. And that's the that's what we call the Ohio's Digital Learning Clearinghouse, and it's something that we put in a, a budget bill back in 2007. Governor uh, Governor Strickland signed off on it. Uh, his his administration took a while to work through all the rules and regs, but it went on uh, line on a on a limited basis back in September, and. Uh, Boy, I, I've gotten to meet uh, Bob Summers and, and Governor Kasich's people, and they are going to run with this thing. And this is really drastically going to improve education throughout the country. So this is this is already in place in the Buckeye yes. State. Yes, it is. We're the first in the nation to come up with it. So it, it's are people using it? Because I'll, be, yeah. I'll bet most parents have not heard anything about this. The, that's that's probably true. It just came on on a limited basis uh, in September. There there's you know around a hundred or so students uh, using it right now. I think it's less than a hundred students are using it right now. But they they want they did not want to bring it out in a big way at the beginning of this school year because they wanted to work the bugs out. And uh, Governor Kasich's people, you know, having Bob Summers, who used to be the uh, president of uh, Butler Tech uh, up in my area, Butler County. Um, Having him on top of things is 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 just great because now Bob is running the governor's 21st century education program and and Bob is is working technology into the into education in such a way that we are going to be able to have teachers have you know this is a great tool to put in a teacher's tool belt and they're going to be able to have more one on one time with kids when needed and yet go through more material and accomplish more with the students than they ever have before. Talking with State Rep Bill Coley. So let me make sure I understand. Let's say in Mason High School, you got a kid there that says, you know what, uh, I'm going to study something to do with Japanese, uh, Japan as I go to college, whatnot, and mm-hmm. I want to learn Japanese, but they don't offer it. Let's say they don't at Mason, but they do it at Ashtabula Lakeside. Mm-hmm. They will be able to take that class online if it's available? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And 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 you just think about this one. We have a lot of kids in 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 our area. Dad works for GE and has to do a temporary assignment to uh, Arizona for four months. And instead of Dad flying back and forth all the time, what if the whole family got up and and went to Arizona and stayed in an apartment in Arizona? The kids would not have to withdraw from their local school, and and they could just connect to the school electronically. Still keep all their classes, all their friends, all the same teachers, and then when they relocate. There's no disruption in their class. Bill, would you, would you be able, willing to take a couple of calls on this? Sure. All right. I, I, I have some questions for you, but I want to make sure I give, you know, parents out there right now are probably going, oh, this is incredible. They want to get some of the details. 513-749-7800, the big one, or pound 700 and at and Who pays for this, Bill? Is this extra money? Is this going to cost us more or will it cost us less or about the same? It'll cost us about the same. We already have the money available. One of the big things in in line items that we have in the budget is we spend a little over $200 per student on books or statewide and per district it'll change but we spend over $200 per student on books well for well on under $200 per student I can make sure each student has a device be it a laptop pad you know whatever electronic device they need to happen and and a, and a high-speed internet connection to, to make all this happen and we can do that with existing funds I certainly like breaking down the the traditional brick and mortar school idea because I think long term, if if we do this and roll this out successfully, this is kind of along the ideas that the lines of the ideas that I've brought up in the past. If we roll this out the right way, we can shrink the the physical size of those schools, which in the long term will save us money. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Doc, you think back, you go back to Socrates and in, in you know in ancient times, you know the way we always presented course material with uh, somebody standing at, at the front of the room or the front of the group and lecturing. And, you know, that, that was the traditional way to always present material. Well, corporations uh, in this country do not train their employees that way anymore. They use, they use a, a little bit of that, a little bit of electronic, you know, and they, they use a whole, a whole raft of tools in their tool belt to train their employees 
why don't we get on, on board and, and start training our students for the future by incorporating technology in their education? Yeah, we have to take, I bet a lot of companies do this, we have to take yearly training for some of the things that go on in our company, and it's an interactive thing. Okay, you know, you read the stuff, you answer the questions, you click next, and you go on. It takes about a half hour or so. I, I You know, even if you're not somebody that thinks this is the the answer to it, which I think this is part of the answer, it certainly can be a help. At very least, I think this is going to be a help, as long as it doesn't cost us a whole lot of money. Exactly. And, and when you look at what their traditional method of teaching people cost, you know, this, this is going to improve quality and reduce cost. And it's just a really exciting time to be, be on board. You know, I don't want people thinking of this as watching a videotape of a lecture. Think of this more as a Discovery Channel or History Channel online interactive. So it is interactive. This will, this will be Absolutely. interactive. So will it be the teacher at the other end? It won't be necessarily one-on-one. She may have 45 people watching, and then it could be interactive just like a regular classroom where they answer questions or exactly it can it can be called uh, synchronous time where everybody's watching what's going on or it can also be asynchronous where where the teacher won't be live but but part of it'll be a recorded part and you know so it'll really work into one of the big problems we have uh, that we found in education is when you get through the the lower grades kids are much more alert early in the day and then they kind of you know just their body rhythms and stuff I mean they're really up and at them at at seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning, and they start losing, you know, losing attention later in the day. Whereas our high school kids tend to not have a lot of attention early in the day, yep. and they get more. Well, now you're going to be able to let each parent, you know, kind of have access to their kids' education online, and you kind of tailor it to the individual student. If he's a morning person, he can do a lot of his work in the morning. If he's an afternoon person, he can do it more in the afternoon. That makes a lot of sense. Let me get a couple quick calls in here. It's State Rep Bill Coley. Uh, Mike in Fairfield, do you have a question or comment? Well, I, I like everything he's got to say except for one thing What's about that? how if, if, if that teacher's got so many students, it's 600 students, or $600 a student, a, a bonus of 54000 you're now turning that teacher into a salesperson, not a teacher. They're, you're incentivizing them to try to get as many students to get online as possible. Why not just let them be the teacher, pay them the salary, their step raises, you know, just like every other teacher? Why do they have to be incentivized to get kids onto this program and, and they get paid so much per student? Bill, explain how that, that whole thing works with the money and them getting incentivized. <laughs> Two ways to look at it. I mean, if you, you know, Ronald Reagan always wanted to bring pay for performance. Technology wasn't at the state that he could bring that in into in existence during his presidency. Now it is. But if, if you don't want to look at it from that aspect, look at it from the other aspect. A teacher can touch. A terrific teacher can touch more students than they ever could before, and that's the fantastic thing about it. Uh, you know, we're a capitalistic society. That's why, that's why I'm a believer in pay for performance and rewarding our best and our brightest teachers with that. But, you know, if, if you want to look at it from the other standpoint, she can reach more people. The, the other great thing to think about this, guys, is – Remember the guy with the big hair and, and the beard, and he taught painting on PBS with the mighty white. And oh the yeah, the guy. We'll put, a, we'll put a little squirrel behind the tree right here. We'll put a little squirrel. Right uh, yeah, here, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I don't believe that that gentleman is still with us. No, he's not. But but he's still teaching kids. He's oh. still teaching kids, and we're gonna have we're gonna have teachers that are gonna have contracts that'll have residual clauses in them when when the school district is still selling their course material. Of course, someone else will be having the interaction with the kids and answering the questions and doing all that. But there, there's gonna be teachers that are gonna be able to still touch kids long after they left the classroom, and I think that's a great thing. Absolutely, Bob Ross was his name, by the way. Nick in Fairfield, you're on with State Rep. Bill Coley. Good morning, gen- gentlemen, and I and uh, I do appreciate you. Uh, Talking about this, uh, what, what the representative is bringing out is, uh, to me, sort of like um, uh, putting a Band-Aid on a leg that has gangrene. Uh, the system, according to the – the system needs to be fixed altogether from top to bottom. This is just one enhancement of a new system that we need to have. But the funding system in this state is where the problem is. And we're spinning our wheels in a perfect storm by constantly going back to the taxpayers and asking them uh, for levies. And the taxpayers are saying no. And then the state ends up after the taxpayers say no, uh, you know, two, three, four times, the state takes over. And now it's, 
the state's running it, but they're trying to deal with the same amount of money that they have now. Let me give uh, let me give the state rep a chance to answer, Nick. Uh, I, I couldn't disagree more. It, it, the, the, we're just talking about one aspect of how this isn't the same system. This is one aspect of uh, that'll be incorporated in the go, in Governor Kasich's new 21st century education model. The system's not going to look anything near like you know. We're not trying to put a Band-Aid on anything. We're trying to change the way we educate students in the state of Ohio. And uh, we're not, this wasn't talking about changing funding mechanisms or anything. We can do that and are doing that within the existing structure that we already have. So I, I, I think this is, uh, this is just a dynamic shift in how we educate kids, and, and I don't think it's anything like trying to put a Band-Aid on, on the existing system. No, I think this is heading in a new direction, number one. It's not the silver bullet. It's not the end of our problems. We've got a lot more stuff to deal with. But I think if we could take some of the good stuff from the past and then use technology as our servant as opposed to us being a servant to it in schools and just buying kids the computers because they're going to have to learn this instead of saying we're going to put it to work for us and have those kids learn online, we can save money and probably get a better product. Well, and the great thing about it, Doc, is is that it it doesn't it doesn't take, you know, it, it allows it on a it gives the parents and the student and the school on a course by course basis. A kid doesn't have to choose to be, you know, an online student fully or a bricks and mortar student fully. He could be bricks and mortar for every class except the fact they don't teach Mandarin Chinese at his school, and he wants to learn Mandarin Chinese. Um, and and so he'll just take that one class electronically and 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 i just think it's just an awesome thing and i i'm very proud to be a part of it it sounds interesting what's the website so people can go there and check it out themselves uh you can see it now i believe it's at oln ohio learning network oln.org and uh if you look at course selection and uh you can you can kind of see that online uh the governor is uh moving the home for that uh part of what we're doing in the budget and I met with the dean up at Ohio State, and I've met with our deans at UC and and uh, UD in Miami, and and I'm meeting with all of our deans of education, and they are all, all assuring me that they are training our next generations of teachers so that they will be able to teach in this this new world. And they, the deans are very excited about this because it just gives their new teachers more tools in their tool belt. And Governor Kasich is committed to making sure that through e, a lot of programs that ex, exist currently in the state that we take our, our, our existing teacher core and make sure we have the training available for those teachers to get those teachers in the system. Really interesting stuff. I'll put a link to that website so people can go there and check it out. State Rep Bill Coley, I please appreciate you sharing the info with me, sir. Thanks, Doc. Thank you so much. We'll have him back on uh, some other point, too, so you can uh, take some more questions. We had limited time today. But if you want to comment on it, 513-749-7800, the big one. Boy, it's nice to see Ohio at least leading with something like this. A new online class uh, structure for the state of Ohio, for public schools. It it sounds interesting. I think it has some merit. Warren and Dayton, you're a teacher? Uh, Yes, I am. Does does uh, this have some, some merit? Is this a good way to go? Absolutely. You know, there's special people that come in from time to time. Example, uh, Bob Ross. That guy's probably going to be on the, in some form, in training people how to, how to paint and imagination and style, you know, at, you know with an easy pace to them. Absolutely. Uh, at Wright State, uh, a fellow started in multimedia, and I was never interested in biology and uh, the sciences, that kind of thing, which probably I should have been. But this guy made it. He rolled down the uh, computer, you know, through the uh, hallways and brought it in. And it had music. It had sites. It had stuff from National Geographic. And he really just put it all together. And for those people that are comfortable with it, uh, I think it can be implemented and maybe not forced on every instructor to learn this or that, and maybe they aren't equipped. But for people who, uh, you know, can roll with something like this, and it can be shared over a wide-based network and over the school system and even outside a school system. So I think it sounds great. Well, that's nice to hear. I'm glad to hear teachers, at least some, are supportive of it. This is not about eliminating teachers or limiting what they can make. I see it as getting the best teachers doing the best job and paying them great for it. But maybe I'm wrong. What are your thoughts on it? We'll get to them right after the news on 700 WLW.
Coming up today with Bill Cunningham on the big show at 106. Chris Smitherman from the NAACP is in studio to discuss several issues going on, plus Bill's reaction to Ryan Widmer on Dateline Friday night. It's all coming up today with Bill Cunningham on 700 WLW. About uh, 9.42 or so, about seven minutes or so away, we'll get to our headlines from the future. But i got to get a couple more calls on uh, Representative Bill Coley. I I think it has some merit. I think some of the ideas that we're heading, that that he brought up, heading that direction, I think is the beginning of where we need to go. We'll have to evolve the thing. There's going to be some growing pains, but I think that's in the right direction. A couple of quick calls. William, you're on 700 WLW. Yeah, good morning. Hi there. Uh, uh, hi. I've really enjoyed the uh, conversation going this morning, and uh, I just want to um, add maybe a, a, a cautionary note. Sure. Uh, um, in many teacher education programs across this country, uh, integrating technology is fairly routine. So there's nothing new with that, and online courses are right. growing a lot. But uh, the problem is, is that we have a lot of research on how to design uh, online courses, what they look like, how should they be delivered. You know what we don't have is hardly any research that shows uh, online courses really do improve student achievement. And I would urge the representative to take it a step further and start to build some research base where we can begin to see whether these things actually do improve student achievement. That's a great point. Well, part of the reason we don't have a lot of research on it is because it's, it's so new. It's in its infancy as far as online. Now, we've had computer learning for a long time because we've had computers for a long time. But, you know, it, it, technology is just going faster and faster. And, you know, online, that part is certainly new. There may be some initial research out there. I would doubt that it would hurt education. I don't see it slipping. In fact, some of the benefits I, I see right off is merit, not just in the teacher, but for the student. We've had, we've had curriculum for a long time that uh, was a work-at-your-own-pace curriculum for kids, right? I mean, that, that's not new. Well, that's kind of what this is. I say we set the bar. We as a, a state, and every state would have to do this, and then also as a community, you set the bar and standards. And you say, here is what you should know. In order to reach certain places in your education, whether it's, you know, you're a junior, a senior, a sophomore, whatever, or in order to graduate, here is what you've got to know. You've got to, you've got to acquire this amount of knowledge in these areas. And we give kids a lot of different p- paths to get there. So maybe I, I envision not only the ability to take a class in a distant school in the state somewhere else because it's not offered in yours. I'd like to eventually, if it works out right, see kids to be able to take a different class with a different teacher teaching the same subject. You could have a great teacher. Fantastic. Everybody loves, they learn from them, but I'm just not able to learn by their style or learn as well as I am from another teacher's style. You'd have that. You'd have, you know what, I really like learning from that teacher, and they taught Algebra 1. That teacher also teaches Algebra 2. I'll take to Algebra 2 from them. I mean, there's a lot of different paths to get there, and I see this opening up. Rich Hoffman joins me now from No Lakota Levy. I had him on last week. Rich, what do you think about Coley's idea? I am so excited to hear something outside the box. I mean, right, your show comes on today, and it's a Monday, and it's kind of dreary, and it's, oh, goodness, we're all back to work, and then I hear something wonderful and beneficial, and, and it's just, what a wonderful way to start the week. Thanks. No, I mean, well, we, we talk about a lot of the bad things going on, and I really try to talk about, you know, some ideas with education. You know, SB5 is really contentious. People are really frustrated by it. Everyone thinks assault on teachers and schools and whatever. No, we know that we need to grow, and we know we can't continue to spend the way we've been spending so let's try to benefit everybody, first and foremost, the kids, and second of all, then the teachers. And I think they can make a lot of money doing this. Oh, I think they could, too. I think this solves a, this solves a whole lot of problems. Uh, we're we're, we're, we're kind of at one of those precipices where we're holding on to the old ideas of education. And, and the institutions, the way we built the institutions, have... I want, they want to maintain that, but kids, you know, with a Facebook and, and their Twitter accounts and, and the online gaming and, and, you know, kids are able to do three or four things at the same time. They're, they're bored to death in class. And when you start dumping 10,000 uh, 
grand a kid uh, in, from the state, and you're looking at how to, how to resurrect your funding model and, and solve all these education problems all over the state, and then you're trying to hold on to the old system and the, what it costs, and kids aren't getting you know, they're, they're bored. I mean, they're, they're, we haven't seen any, any kind of increase in their performance for a number of years doing this system, but yet they're, they'll, they'll spend all Saturday and Sunday playing a game online, not because the game is so much interesting, but because there's goals that are achievable and they can reach them online. And they'll, while they're doing it, they're talking to kids on Facebook, and, and that's, it's an interactive society, and that's the way education has to be. Well, Rich, let's, let's talk about some of the problems that people, uh, that every day we bring up, not just with schools, but that also affect schools, opportunities. Well, if you're poor or if you're a certain class of people, however they've been segregated for political gain, this breaks down those, those opportunity borders if they exist. In other words, any student under this program, the way I envision it long term, it would be able to take any class that is available in the state and not have any barrier based on their, their uh, right. economic the class or whatever. There's no issue. It doesn't right. matter if you're black, white, Muslim, Christian, anywhere in the state. You can take these classes, and if you are driven to do so, you will learn. You know, the only people that would lose on this are the people who are trying to maintain the old system, which is, is completely in, it's redundant now. It doesn't matter. Well, if you're really trying to prepare kids for college, look how many people are in college classes. You have 40, 50 kids, sometimes more than that, in most of these college classes these days. And if you really want your high schoolers to be ready to go to school, pampering them, you know, holding their hands, uh, going to a counselor class and walking to the, to the lunchroom and, and making sure they get to each class isn't getting them there. It, it, they have to be ready to hit the ground running and be, be self-sufficient and, and, sit, and log on to the computer and do their classes and, you know, and have some sort of uh, independence on how they achieve their education before they even think about going to college. Well, let's talk old versus new. You've got a lot of people out there that are, that are 60, 70, 80 right now listening going, Doc, when I was in school, kids right. learning, whatever, and they're right. right. But what we're talking about is taking some of those values because back then it was – you are going to learn because, A, your parents told you to learn, and B, because you were driven. And the rewards were out there. This is a, rewarded, a reward-based system. If you want to achieve, it's there. Right. And, and, it so actually, I, and it actually gives parents more control because they would have access to this stuff. They'd sit down with you at home and say, yeah, I think maybe algebra class in, uh, you know, in Columbus, this school would be better than this one, so on and so forth. Right, right, right. My kids, when they were in their junior years, they were looking at their senior years, filling out their schedule for the following year, and they were like, Dad, Mom, this isn't, this isn't go- you know, I'm not going to have that, and I'm going to be wasting my time half the day. I have, I have to take, like, two study halls in order to fill my time. And I said, well, why don't you just see if you can take these classes online and make up your credits and get out? And, and both of them did it. And they finished their entire senior years by the end of the junior year, and they were able to, they were able to do whatever they wanted in their, in their senior years without having to waste their time. And, and if you can, if using these online classes, you can, it, it, everything's, everything's open to the student. And that's what we should be working towards as a society. Well, look at where we save money then. I see long-term savings being primarily in the size of the brick-and-mortar school right. these cathedrals oh, yeah. we build. Number two, the books and materials online, uh, somewhat. Um, we're already par- providing computers and, and technology right. a, a lot, so that, you know, we wouldn't have a, a huge increase there because we've already been doing that. And we would save on some, a small amount by the number of teachers. That would probably be offset with some of the teachers making more right. money. Right, right. And, and I it, like that idea. I've always said I want you to, you know, pay what you're worth. It takes the barrier away from, from the, the kids that really want to go and then the kids that, you know, have a harder time. There's still the traditional way to go about it. But the, the kids that are wanting to move through it, and they, they're learning and trying to achieve, they're not held back by, I, mean, I hate to say it, by the, by the people who are not, not quite up mm-hmm. to speed. Well, and I like the idea that you could take these over and over again. I mean, sure. where, whereas in traditional public schools now, once you move on to that lesson, you've got to go get a special tutor or a, uh, you know, somebody to help you out that's already been through the class or pay for something like that. This way you don't have to do that. I think All it's right. fantastic. All right, Rich Hoffman, I appreciate you joining me, sir. Thank you so much. See Got a lot of people want to comment on this. We'll get to them next on 700 WL. Tomorrow night, Eastern Hills Community Tea Party is meeting 7 o'clock at Connections Church. They're going to be discussing, among other things, Governor Kasich's budget. That is the Eastern Hills Community Tea Party, 7 o'clock Connections Church. Tomorrow night, discussing Governor Kasich's budget, amongst other things. 
seen cut after cut after cut recently. And if you don't like it and you're worried about the future of education, well, we've got to do something. And the solution is not throwing money at it since 1970 or thereabout. We have continued to increase funding exponentially, and we have not seen a whole lot of results for that extra spending. So the answer has to be in a different direction. I think the online classes... Allowing kids, if they have the ability to do so, to work at their own pace, take some of the classes over and over again. I have no problem with some teacherless ones for some of the lesser subjects. Or if a kid thinks that they can, if they're particularly good at learning on their own, let them take the interactive online classes without a teacher. Prove that you have learned the material, not just sat through the little tutorial or something. Prove that you have learned the material and move on. Why, why would that be a bad thing? David and Kenwood, you're on the big one. Hey, morning. I'm a current student at UC, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm taking some online courses. Let me tell you, they're really not what you think they are. Um, you know, if you, if you know what you're doing on a computer, there's this button called Control-F, and you can look up the answers on the test. You know, I have my book open while I take the test. I don't study for the test, and I get a 96 on every test. I don't learn anything. Well, what we need to do then is make sure that the tests are taken, like you do if you have to take a real estate test or something like that, in a you know private setting where you can't do that. As far as learning, if you're able to learn and you want to cheat learning, fine, but you're not going to be able to pass the test. That that's how I envision it down the road. Would that would that be okay? Yeah, that would be great. I mean, that's how they should do it. But I'm just saying it's it's too hard to get it supervised, and you know, I, I literally have the test the textbook open while I'm taking the test. And Well, I see. The way we do it, David, and I'm glad you brought up that point. Thank you so much. The way we do it then is to say, learn. You want to cheat while you're learning? Great. You're not really learning then. And the proof will be in, can you prove that you have learned, mastered the material? If you can, fine. Obviously, proving that you've mastered the material has to be in a supervised setting somehow. So you offer that every week, every quarter, however we set it up. I mean, there's there's a lot of Bugs to be worked out as far as that goes. But the only significant possible downside to this, the only possible significant downside I see is if it's not implemented the right way. I mean, there's a lot of little issues you come up with. But the only possible downside, if it's not put in place the right way, like, like David pointed out, if they can cheat on the test, of course, that's ridiculous. You don't need to be, you don't need to be supervised necessarily while learning only to prove that you have mastered the material. Another problem with the implementation could be if it's not based on personal responsibility. You've got to prove you've learned. And second of all, if the special interests get into it. If everybody says, hey, this is great, well, we, but we need to protect dot, dot, dot. We need to give special favor to dot, dot, dot. We need extra money and resources and whatever to dot, dot, dot. I don't want to hear from the unions on this crap I don't want to hear from inner city schools or rural schools all claiming that they're getting the shaft somehow. If you have access to the materials online, then you have access to learning. Done. But, of course, they will step up and try to get it. They'll try to get extra money. They'll try to protect themselves, protect their jobs. If we can avoid that, this is the beginning of something very good that could certainly help education, help more kids learn, and I think also save us some money. It's Doc Thompson on 700 WLW. Yeah, you know, I'm going down the list of schools that, that, have, uh, that have made cuts or are planning on making significant cuts to their teaching staff. Batavia, Northwest, Oak Hills, Princeton, Cincinnati, Claremont Northeast, Southwest, Sycamore, Three Rivers, West Claremont. I mean, the list goes on and on. Of course, Little Miami, Lebanon, Forest Hill, Lachlan, Lakota. Uh, Marymount, Mason, Mount Healthy, New Richmond. I mean, it's virtually every school district with some serious cuts in in teaching staff and positions. I mean, 175 in the Cincinnati public schools. The list goes on and on. We've got to do something different. Then I see a story, even though Sycamore is going to eliminate 24 positions. Last Thursday night, the board decided they're going to cut 24 positions, 13 of them teachers and special ed staff, 11 support positions. Then I see a story that Sycamore is planning to build a budgeted $2.1 million administrative office out of the district's cash reserves, a 12,000-square-foot building with a 15,000-square-foot parking lot. I, I'll, I'll, I don't know. Maybe they actually need it. I'll assume they actually need an administrative office, that that is something that the, they really need. Which do you need more? 
the teachers or the administrative offices? Which, which is it? I would think if you're cutting 13 teachers, that maybe you should have them before you get your new administrative offices. I think the online teaching will actually help this. I think it'll actually give us more control over stuff like that as well. Columbus, Mike, you're on the big one, 700 WLW. Yo, Doc, it's nice of uh, David to call in and admit to all of us that he's flushing his uh, hard-earned college dollars or his parents' college dollars down the drain by cheating on tests. Amazing. But, um, hey, I think it's a great idea of what they're pushing. And, I mean, you, you could watch the same lecture over and over again mm-hmm. until you got it. And if you're interested in a subject, you can maybe surf the web to find a different teacher if one's not teaching it that where you can understand it. Classes, different teachers, you could I take mean, them, I, you know, over I, and I, over. In college, I, I admit I failed an econ class twice. And the third go around, this teacher taught it in an entirely different way, and I got an A in the class. Well, and I like the idea that teachers, Mike, would be able to, to actually spend time teaching as opposed to just, you know, babysitting over, you know, movies that you watch sometimes or film strips or whatever, where they could actually say, all right, Doc is not getting this. I'll spend some time with him in our actual class time tomorrow. I can spend 10 minutes with him to show him what, see, this is what you're doing wrong. Oh, I see. Okay. It actually, I think, benefits the teacher as well. They can actually concentrate on the students who need it and the ones who don't, they can keep on going, keep on growing. I think it's a pretty good idea. All right, I didn't get to the headlines of the future. I will get to them at uh, about 20 after. 10.20 this morning. Headlines of the future. 700 WLW, the home of the Reds.